death be outwitted is the secret of eternal life just around that corner. Today, medical science patches up mutilated bodies, transplanting human skin, eyes, limbs, even vital organs. Is the next step the transplantation of the human brain? Many scientists answer yes, but they pause and add a grim warning. For in the ancient folk legends, tales are told of blood-sucking vampires, crawling out of graves to live on the bodies of helpless victims. Is man now doomed to produce a race of ever-living monstrosities, worse than the vampires of legend? Will ruthless men and women of great wealth and power greedily buy or steal the living bodies of the young and beautiful so their brains may live on forever? Such questions may seem fanciful, but at this very moment, scientists are working on the answer to brain transplantation, and human bodies are used. This girl was buried in a nearby cemetery yesterday. Only a few hours ago, her body was stolen. By Dr. Otto Frank, and brought to this hidden laboratory. He has grafted a living animal's brain into this newly dead body. If the experiment works, the next step will be the transplantation of a human brain. The brain cells are being reactivated by an atomic fission produced in the cyclotron. Has he found the way to outwit death? Or has he created another? Dr. Frank takes the chance of smashing his way into a newly sealed vault. His experiments cannot continue without another body. The watchman's mind was not on body snatchers. Just his usual nip. to a human body. Leaving the dead watchman, the monstrosity carried the girl's body out of the vault. It fears and obeys one master, Dr. Frank.
Here beneath the old mansion, the doctor carefully prepared for another transplant. This body had been in the vault for only a few hours. Chances seemed better this time. Still, Dr. Frank was doubtful. Tissue in dead bodies deteriorates rapidly. Where were the live, fresh bodies he'd been promised? He bitterly resents that every step forward depends on the whim of a miserly old woman brooding upstairs in her bedroom. And Hetty March wonders. Has she been a fool squandering money on this strange experiment? Money hoarded through a long, greedy lifetime, each day more money, each day death getting closer. Ah, but to start life again in a brand new body, beautiful and young, no price can be too high for that. Can she really trust the doctor? Can she really trust anyone? Hasn't everyone tried to cheat her? Wanting her money while they smiled at her ugliness? But they never got a penny. Oh, how she made them sweat. Especially this old fool, companion and gigolo. How many years she's kept him dangling on promises. Well, sometimes it's convenient to have a man, especially when he comes cheaper than servants. That's the Austrian girl? Nino Rhodes, 18, no family, pleasing personality, whatever that might mean. Hmm? Thick ankles, pimply face, but she always smiles when she's spoken to, very likely. Well, application forms for a servant girl don't usually include bust, waist, and hip measurements. We interrupt this hmm? program to bring you a... All three will be here tomorrow, and then you can choose. Early this evening at Greenhaven Cemetery, the body snatchers brutally murdered night watchman Robert Payne 62, who evidently interrupted his killers during their ghoulish task. His neck was broken. The imprint of a huge pair of hands was found on his throat. It's the opinion of the police that the same gang that has previously... Ring for Dr. Frank. So that's what he was doing. If they come here, I hit the switch, and nuclear reaction is set off. Close the circuit breaker. Ah. Uh. And in a matter of minutes, this house and any evidence it might contain becomes a radioactive hole in the ground. Be careful. But we can wait for that until after your operation. Well, nothing must go wrong. There's no sign of life. Watch.
likes but one thing. The brain. Hans was still living when he was dragged from that wrecked car. That's why we succeeded with the transplant. She seems alive. She is, to a limited extent. She'll be able to move around, but the brain deterioration is too extensive for thought processes. Ten miles. Which way? That way. Are you going to Hollywood? No such luck. I'm what's known as a born domestic. For the next 12 months, I'll be scrubbing floors and making beds. But when my time's up, Hollywood will look out. That's strange. A foreign domestic agency paid my passage, too. I'm from Vienna, Austria. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I'm from England. No. Is this your first trip? Yes. I'm awfully excited. <laughs> <laughs> Postal board. I know speak English very good. Are you going to work for Mrs. March, too? This sounds like a sister act. You, too? Nina Road? Yes, sir. Anita Gon Gonzalez? Beatrice Mullins, sir. Eh? That's right. Are you Mr. March? No. I work for Mrs. March. Come along. Three new bodies, fresh, live, young bodies. No families or friends within thousands of miles, no one to ask embarrassing questions when they disappear. <laughs> wondered which one Mrs. March would pick. The little Mexican, the girl from Vienna, or the buxom blonde. Victor knew his pick, but he still felt uneasy. Making love to an 80-year-old woman in the body of a 20-year-old girl is insanity. Still, Hetty's plan to transfer her fortune to the new body had been brilliant. Unpleasant to think of what was going to happen to these girls, but a man has to consider his own future. What would happen to him if Hetty were to cast him off after all these years? Warm welcome to hang out. Well, there's your new home, girls. <sighs> Gives me the shivers. Aren't there any neighbors? No. Are there any other servants? No, but I don't think you're going to find it boring.
What a jolly little place this is. to leave this house without permission. Now, hurry along. Hurry up. Now, go. Turn round, slowly. Get the doctor. Get the doctor! As with the other bodies stolen from cemeteries, the nerve endings of the brain were too far gone to receive a proper transplant. The experiment had failed to produce anything more than a walking, breathing, zombie-like creature. But the doctor permitted her to wander about the laboratory. She was quite harmless and, at times, even amusing. Charming, isn't she? Did you want something? Uh, Mrs. March is waiting for you. The girls have arrived. She doesn't have a brain. Might be advantages. I want them examined immediately. Very well. This way. Victor, the doctor can conduct the examination perfectly. <laughs> what an old spoil spot I am. <laughs> Have you disconnected the phone? Can't I depend on you for anything? Won't it be nice when those girls start calling police, employment agencies, immigration authorities, consulates? There will be no phone calls. Hideous. She's useless. There is one more test I should make. Do anything you want with her. The other two? Perfect medical specimens. All right, Anita. Get dressed now and wait for the others. Mrs. March, I am now giving you notice. I do not care to work in this house any longer. I demand that... You have signed an agreement. If you have any objection, you will discuss them with the immigration authorities as provided for in your papers. But, Mrs. March... Later. Stand up, my dear. I've got the same measurements as Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> The lucky girl? Yeah. Allow me to be the first to offer congratulations. <laughs> to both of you. <laughs> For me?
Come on. Come on. Your room is in the basement, Anita. Nina, your room is upstairs, right across from the top of the stairs. I'll have to show you. Nonsense. You'll be all right. Go on. She's not in her room. Yes. Victor left a little while ago. Maybe she went with him. She didn't get out of this prison without permission, that's for sure. Yes. But she would have said goodbye. Why should she? We only met her yesterday. I don't blame her for not wanting to sleep in the basement. Oh. It's funny, though. Mrs. March wouldn't even listen when I asked to be dismissed. This house gives me the creeps. She doesn't even have any uniforms for us. Be what in the world do you think you're doing? You told us last night to clean and polish in here. Look at your hands. That will leave a stain on them. Now, now don't argue. Go in and wash them immediately. You can put the things away after Nina cleans them. Mrs. March, where is Anita? Anita? Oh. She left. Last night. I would like to give notice, too. I will discuss it with you another time.
Yes, Mrs. March? Your name is it's Nina. But, Mrs. March, she's got polish all over, and I'm not doing anything. I don't want you running up and down stairs. Those pretty legs of yours will get ugly muscles. Send Nina to me. Yes, ma'am. I'll be in my room. Be come with me. I want to show you something. Anita wouldn't leave without taking her clothes. I think we'd better get out of here fast. B, I'd hate to go if she's still here. You go now if you go with me. experiment before Dr. Frank would be ready. But this was the most critical of all the experiments. For the first time, the grafting operation would be performed on a living human body, and the brain would come from the doctor's favorite cat. Anita was ready. Nina. What about your clothes? Never mind. Let's go. She almost saw us. Let's wait a while to make sure we won't run into her.
B. B. Where are you? Answer me. I'm here, Mrs. March. She's locked us in. Open it. I said open it. Mrs. March. It took long enough. The lawyer will see you in the morning. I told him you were going to change your will. You'll have to check the basement door. It broke loose. that, Anita? Where? Oh, I don't think so.
They're not about to leave this house after what they've witnessed. They know Hans is outside there. Even if we could get past that creature outside, there's still the electric fence. The phone's dead. We can't get help that way. If we could get the car... That's it. Victor! Victor! He likes me, I guess. If you could get the keys from him... I was having a little nightcap. Who do you think you are pinching me? What? What? Maybe you like some company. Someone like me? Mm-hmm. That's more like it. Don't you like me, Victor? is chained. Let's go outside. Outside? I think I'd like that. Anita. 
Anita, let me help you. Astonishingly complex, isn't it? The human eye. That's the brain. <laughs> She's unconscious, but she'll live. No. She will live. How oh, I need her all. She's dead. Nina, dear. Come along with us now. You've had a bad shock. Get out of here, both of you. The same would be. Why don't you do something for her? I've done what I can for now. Later, an operation might be possible. I'm preserving the eye. Let me show you. Come over here. The cellular structure is being kept alive by these electrical vibrations. I use the same principle in keeping that hand alive. Dee is a very lucky girl. You think that ironical? Let me explain. I'm the only man alive today capable of restoring your friend's sight. Dr. Alexis Carell, who pioneered the transplanting of vital human organs, kept a portion of an animal's heart alive for many years. For this, he received the Nobel Prize. And I, who have so far surpassed his efforts. Surely you don't want to compare yourself with Dr. Correll. He was humane. I, too, fight to preserve life and to find the means to improve the lives of future generations. Your viewpoint is that narrow, ignorant one held by the medical society today, which forces me to work in a place like this, to give in to the whims of a foolish old woman because she can supply me with the funds I need to continue my work. Oh, you're going to be all right. Nina? Yes, please. I, I can't see. Why? Your eyes are bandaged. Something happened. Don't think about it now. Listen to me, B. Are you listening? This is important. Yes. We must be ready if a chance comes. I remember now. It was Anita. She... Oh, my... take care of her. I'm sure you will take excellent care of her <laughs> until your plans call for something else. Or am I to be the next one, doctor? There. You got all the clothes? Yes. And made my hair appointment? I took care of everything on your list. While you were talking with the lawyer. 
Hair appointment, Monday, 10 a.m., Charles of the Ritz, under Nina's name. I'll want Nina to model these later, after I've rested. You tell her. They're back. I'll have to leave you now. Remember, I'm going to try to get us out of here tonight. No. Forget about me. I won't go. B. Don't talk like that. Mrs. March had not realized her new body had such a satisfactory shape. Perhaps not as spectacular as the English girl, but in excellent taste. She couldn't help being amused. The stupid girl was not only modeling Mrs. March's future wardrobe, but Mrs. March's future body. So firm, so nicely rounded in places men like. You might have knocked when you came in, Victor. I'm sorry. Don't stop your style show on my account. Does my uh, aged lock in Var disturb you? Eddie, that's unkind. Shut up. You see, it's hard for a vain, stupid man to realize that he holds no attraction for a lovely young girl. You're not needed now, Victor. Close the door quietly when you go out. I'm not going to be needed at all. That's what you're saying, isn't it? After tomorrow, when... Victor! That's enough! Get out! If it's the way it's going to be, when what? Don't ask tiresome questions. That will be enough for tonight. I want us both to get some rest. Try to sleep. But Mrs. March... That's an order. Do as I say. You're not looking for me, are you? Why would a pretty young girl want to be around an old man? What did you try to tell Mrs. March? Hmm? So that's what you plan to do. Get rid of old Victor once you get all that money. The only thing is, of course, it won't really be you. Victor, please tell me. Try to make sense. I am telling you. Tomorrow you'll be one of the richest women in the world. There's a press release. It's in the mails now. To all the major news syndicates. Orphan girl sole heir to March millions. Nina Rhodes is a lucky star. I don't understand. The next press release will be March Mansion Destroyed by Fire. Cinderella Girl, Nina Rhodes, sole survivor. Only it won't be you. It's a pity, too. You're nice the way you are. Please don't let it happen. You could help me and we get away. When you're a rich woman, you wouldn't forget an old friend. A friend who'd saved your life, would you? Get out of the car. And stay there. Victor, we too. We must come too. Wait a minute. Just to make sure.
find this. Thirty. With no, me. I won't go. Why should I want to go on living like this? I'll get Victor to help me, and we will carry you. Did you want something from Victor, dear? Sit down, my dear. I'm afraid you're wearing yourself out with all this rushing round. I don't like that. You realize she's mad, don't you, Dr. Frank? <gasps> Relax. Hurry, doctor. I'll be ready for you shortly, Mrs. March. I'll be waiting. about to happen. You don't know what it's been like for me living with this ugly body of mine. Knowing that any attention I received was not for me, but my money. Well, nobody got any of it. I've never known what it was like to be loved for myself alone. Why did you kill Victor, Mrs. March? Victor? <laughs> Victor was a fool. I'm a practical woman, Dr. Frank. A business woman. I've never been a very practical person. I suppose that makes me a fool, too, in your eyes. Of course not. Relax, Mrs. March. Just relax. Relax. paper making Vicky a legal guardian. That's right, isn't it? I did something, didn't I? That would probably work as well for me. We could stay here. None of this would have to be destroyed. You're better, aren't you? Let's 
try it on your own. I wonder now if Mrs. Marge didn't intend blowing me up along with all the rest of this. You're a very wealthy woman now, Nina. What I must decide is how to keep you and your friends available with the least amount of nuisance to myself. I could keep you under sedation until your signature was required. Or I could replace your brain with one more amenable. What about Mrs. March, Doctor? Mrs. March no longer has a thing to say. Do you, my dear? Completely recovered, I'd say. How do you feel? <laughs> Transplant would be better. It won't hurt. Dr. Frank had enjoyed this transplantation. Mrs. March's brain winding up in the body of a cat. Poetic justice to think of autocratic Mrs. March scavenging in back alley garbage cans for her dinner. But Mrs. March doesn't take things lying down. Mrs. March did not intend to let her money get out of sight. She would follow that girl. Sometime, someplace, revenge would come.